What are you doing here, Veronica? I wanted to know what the publishers had to say about my manuscript. I've been calling you all day. Did you get my messages? Yes. I got all of them. For the millionth time, I will call you when I've heard something. Give me until tomorrow morning. Tomorrow's never promised. Spare me the dramatics. You said that after I turn in my manuscript, it would be fast tracked to the publishers. And I received feedback within the next two or three days. That was two weeks ago, Grace. What do you want me to do? Rush them? There's something you're not telling me. I told you what you're talking about. Just tell me! Just tell me what they said. Fine. Uh, if I remember correctly, I think the word they used was malcontent. Malcontent? It means... I know what the hell it means. Good. Then there's nothing left to discuss. Have a good day, Veronica. Wait. That's it? Hence me saying there's nothing further to discuss? That's it. My manuscript stops there. I believe it does. No. 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 They have to read it again. That's not gonna happen. This is gold. They just can't see it right now. Listen. No. No. I refuse to allow gold to be squandered. Have them read it again. I'm not gonna do that. You know why? Because I agree with them. A female artist living a regular schmegular life just decides to become a, a serial killer overnight. <laughs> Normal people do not become serial killers overnight. It's like the deformed baby of Ruth Rendell and James Elroy. You applaud its existence, but uh, it's better dead. You're wrong. We can't all be wrong. Word of advice? Stick to your um, sappy romance novels. They work. That's what everybody wants. I'm not writing any more of that garbage. Then you should reconsider your career choice. Yeah. Taking this to them a second time would be an embarrassment for both of us. Grace, please. Let's talk about this tomorrow. Like I said, tomorrow's never promised. I could feel her tears stroll from her eyes down to her cheek. Blood flowed from her head due to the blunt impact. So, can I get you something to drink? Water, please. Sure. Coming up. So, just let me know when you're Salad, please. Okay. Here you are. Oh, thanks. Enjoy. Are you, uh, are you recording me? I mean, it's okay if you are, like, uh, just let me uh, put on my sexy voice. Just say, uh, it's a joke. Okay. Yeah, just, uh, just trying to lighten the mood. But uh, I'll leave you to your food. So. Do you usually do stand up on slow nights? <laughs> Sometimes. Uh, 
I find that I do better with smaller crowds. Or no crowd at all. I was founded, found that breaking silence with small talk to be rather futile. God is silent. Why can't man just shut up? You look familiar. I told my reflection the same thing. Mm -hmm. You some kind of journalist or something? Like, I mean, your voice recorder is a dead giveaway. So. I'm a writer. Okay. Like, freelance? Novelist. Fiction. Huh. I, sh I should've known. How's that? I don't know. I mean, you know. Your disdain for small talk tells me that you're extremely introverted and comfortable with your solitude. And you give off this tortured, creative soul vibe. Plus, you're the only person that I've ever met to use futile correctly in a sentence. Impressive. Veronica Butler. Yeah, you wrote all those romance novels. Guilty. Okay, I've actually met you or saw you at a uh, book signing event that you did a few years ago at a Barnes & Noble for your... Uh, Novel, uh, Lavender and Lust. So we've met before? I, I mean, I wouldn't say that. I mean, you signed my copy like you did for dozens of other people, so. But I, wow, like, I'm a huge fan, all right? Like, I, I, your writing is amazing. Thank you. So, when can we expect your next book? That's the burning question. But I mean, you've got your voice recorder on you, like recording any new ideas that come to mind. Like a new book has to be just around the corner, right? One would only hope. On the house. So tell me again about this ex of yours, Siobhan? Sharon? So why didn't you and dear old Sharon work out? She wanted a family and you weren't ready? Ah, uh, it was, uh, it was actually the opposite. Um, I'm the one that wanted the, uh, the family, the nice house, like picket fence. And, uh, she wanted, uh, she wanted something else. And by something else, I mean a guy named Brian. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, yeah. not going to lie. It hurt. It hurt. Um, yeah, I spent weeks trying to figure out, you know, what, what went wrong. Yes, shit happens. I would have keyed her car. Mm, not worth it. Bleach your clothes. Put sugar in a gas tank. Set everything on fire. <laughs> okay, Bernadine. Kill her. <laughs> Just kidding. Right as humor. A little dark, isn't it? Who says introverts can't be funny? But you're like a romance novelist, so you're supposed to tell me stuff like time heals all wounds and, and love conquers all. And my favorite, there is only one happiness in this life to love and be loved. <laughs> yeah, see, I like that. Yeah, you would. So, a romance novelist, cynical of love. <laughs> I think I've seen it all now. Love is predictable. Man meets woman, they fall in love heartbreak, they find their way back to another, rinse and repeat. It's no longer exciting to write about. What would be exciting for you? If you want to know the truth, murder. Really? 
There's something intriguing about it, don't you think? Mm, I can't say that I'm enthused about horrible people committing heinous crimes. You are. You just won't admit it. You see, though we all recoil in shock and horror, it is all still entertainment. Most famous literatures were written about it. I thought writers only write about what they know. Sometimes. My experience on love spans over 15 years. And your experience with murder? Only what Google tells me. Murder novels are so compelling. They abandon reality and are framed in fantasy. Like my manuscript. I knew it! So there, you do have a book on the way. Keyword is manuscript. But after what I heard when I was told today, it more than likely won't see the light of day. No, 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 we're closed. No, we're closed. So, tell me about this uh, murder novel manuscript that you've got coming. Uh, just give me a little summary. Well, it centers around this female artist. She lives a regular life, but then she reads this graphic novel about a serial killer and decides to become one herself. Wait, so <laughs> basically the woman becomes a serial killer overnight. You sound like Grace. Okay, I don't know who this Grace lady is, but she has a point. A woman just wakes up and out of the blue starts killing? You know, I can't decide if you're more concerned that she's a serial killer or that she's a woman who becomes a serial killer. It just doesn't seem realistic is all I'm saying. Fiction is nothing more than exaggeration. It remains true to reality just in a wilder and more extreme form. Framed in fantasy, remember? Have a good night, waiter. Veronica, Veronica. Wait. Look, um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. Do you, you know what anything. homicidal ideation is? No. It's the medical term for the thoughts of homicide. That's a real thing? It's an important risk factor when identifying a person's risk for violence. Is a person bad due to their thoughts or actions or both? I, I don't know. I, I mean, I think about messed up stuff sometimes. And what does that say about me? That you're human. It doesn't get any more realistic than that. Look, I'm all for gender equality, right? Like, if if a woman wants to become the next Ted Bundy, she's more than free to do so. However, is it believable that a woman can become an impromptu murderer? Here, you drop this. You want to read it? What, like, your manuscript? I'm always having my manuscript looked at with fresh eyes. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'd be honored to read your manuscript. Yeah, you're really going to let me read it? I have to convince you one way or another. OK. <laughs> have it in the trunk.
She needed danger and excitement. Her thoughts were now reality.